Evening everyone, Dinosaur here, and welcome to part three of It Moves. So, if I remember rightly, we got to chapter six. I believe it was the abyss, the the underwater level, that's right. Okay, I'm going to assume these fish don't hurt. No breath meter, can't go that way, so I guess I've got to go into the abyss. This way, yep. Okay, just still swimming. The um the linear controls don't work so well for an underwater level, but I I'll live with it. Okay. I'll just go under there, that's fine. Okay, right. So that feels like a trap, so can I can't do anything so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and sprint swim down here oh it's fine okay oh. okay there's a body there is a body there so drain water remove diving gear yes okay so thankfully not as much swimming as I thought there was going to be Okay. Nothing. We've got to wait for the water to drain? No. Down here? Well, it's nice to see another person. That's That makes a nice change. Whether they're good or bad is yet to be known. Read logbook, yes. Okay. One of my biggest fears is deep water. Ironic when you consider the fact that I'm now working on a mining station thousands of feet underwater in the Mariana Trench. I've always wondered why I was afraid and reached a simple conclusion. The true fear presented here is actually going down beneath the surface into the depths. It's a combination of almost all of our most common fears. 1. Fear of the dark. When you're at the bottom of a body of water, you can't see anything. It's pitch black. Have you ever tried to swim as far down in the lake as you can? It gets really dark and cold really fast, about 10 feet down. But even that's nothing compared to the deepest point on the entire crust of the earth, located at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, the Mariana Trench, which is 38,000 plus feet. If you put Mount Everest at the bottom of the trench, the top of the mountain would still be over a mile below the surface of the ocean. Everything below you is complete darkness, and this definitely plays into our collective fear of the dark. Fear of suffocating. I'm not going to read all this out. So yeah, fear of suffocating. That's probably why you, you're scared. It talks about <laughs> laughter and then you can't breathe and then it gets a bit scary. Three, fear of the unknown, as has been evident in this playthrough. Fear of flying insects. Interesting, I haven't come across that one before. Fear of being caught in that you're running away. So basically a lot of the things that this game has explored itself. So maybe it is trying to make a comment there. Um, there you go. Basie said, there's lots to be scared of in the water in case you've forgotten. I can assure you I didn't forget that. Okay, I can't go down there. So I'm going to go along here, where the man went. Ooh. Anglerfish? But what is going... What is going on? Oh, no, no. <sighs> I've got to stop accidentally dying. This is getting ridiculous now. Nope, I can't do anything. I'm... I'm, I'm dying. I've got nothing to say. I'm just either falling or sinking very, very slowly. I'm waiting for it. Oh! Okay. It was a bit of an awkward sound transition there, but <laughs> what's one of the less scary ones? That one didn't mess with me as much as the others did. I think it was because it was quite quick, actually. Okay. What if it was asleep? It hadn't so much as breathed since I'd woken up. Perhaps it was resting, believing that it finally got me. That I was finally in its grasp. Or perhaps it was just toying with me. 
After all, it had been doing just that for countless nights. And now with me under it, pinned against my mattress with no mother to protect me, maybe it was holding off. Savouring its victory until the last possible moment, like a wild animal savouring its prey. I tried to breathe as shallowly as possible, and mustering every ounce of courage I could. I reached over slowly with my right hand and began to peel the blanket off of me. What I found under those covers almost stopped my heart. I did not see it, but as my hand moved the blanket, it brushed against something. Something smooth and cold, something which felt unmistakably like a gaunt hand. I held my breath in terror as I was sure it must have now known that I was awake. Nothing. It, it did not stir. It felt dead. After a few moments, I placed my hand carefully further down the blanket and felt a thin, poorly formed forearm. My confidence and almost twisted sense of curiosity grew as I moved down further to a disproportionately larger bicep muscle. The arm was outstretched, lying across my chest, with the hand resting on my left shoulder as if it had grabbed me in my sleep. I realised I would have to move this cadaverous appendage if I even so much as hoped to escape its grasp. For some reason, the feeling of torn, ragged clothing on the shoulder of this nighttime invader stopped me in my tracks. Fear once again swelled in my stomach and in my chest as I recalled my hand in disgust at the touch of straggled, oily hair. I could not bring myself to touch its face, although I wonder to this very day what it would have felt like. Dear God, it moved. Hostia? Well, regardless, chapter 7. Now, I've got, I'm trying to think what this nightmare thing is. I mean, the only family member we haven't seen yet is the brother. So that was, that's one option. Or it could just be this completely new thing we don't know. At the moment, I'm feeling like the tech stuff is too disparate from the gameplay. I mean, both are very strong elements in themselves, but sometimes the connection of them can be a bit lost. Anyway, save and let's try chapter 7. Hmm, very... Shadow of the Colossus in its scale there. Oh wait, I did just see that. Okay, keep going. Oh nice. Okay. I can't interact with it. I don't... Oh, oh I, I can. I did not want to go in there. They're eyeballs, okay? They're eyeballs. Should I go along or in here? I'm gonna go along. Ooh. Ooh. What's that? So I'm just gonna keep going along rather than going in one of the... What the? It's weird. It's really weird. Oh. I can't. No, it's blocking my path, so I don't go that way. Up. Nope. Okay, I guess I go back. Oh. Interesting. No, bad interesting. What the hell? Ooh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Okay, it can't do anything, it's just... <laughs> it's terrifying! I can't do anything! I've just gotta deal with this. Okay. Please, can I do any- Oh no. Why is it doing this? All I can do is run around and watch this get scary. I can't go back. What is that? Okay, it was just creepy monster face. It moved. It was subtle, but its grip on my shoulder and across my body strengthened. No tears came, but God how I wanted to cry. As its hand and arm slowly coiled around me, my left leg brushed along the cool wall which the bed lay against. Of all that happened to me in that room, this was the strangest. Oh my god! <laughs> I realised that this clutching, rancid thing, which grew, drew great delight from violating a young boy's bed, 
was not entirely on top of me. It was sticking out from the wall like a spider striking from its lair. Ah! <laughs> Something is gripped me from a slow tightening to a sudden squeeze. It pulled a cord on my clothes as if frightened that the opportunity would soon pass. I fought against it, but its emaciated arm was too strong for me. Its head rose up, writhing and contorting under the blanket. I now realised where it was taking me, into the wall. I fought for my dear life. I cried, and suddenly my voice returned to me, yelling, screaming, but no one came. Then I realised why it was so eager to suddenly strike, why this thing had to have me now. Through my window, that window which seemed to represent so much malice from outside, streaked hope. The first rays of sunshine. I struggled further, knowing that if I could just hold on, it would soon be gone. Oh. As I fought for my life, the unearthly parasite shifted, slowly pulling itself up my chest. Its head now poking out from under the blanket, wheezing, coughing and rasping. I do not remember its features, I simply remember its breath against my face, foul and as cold as ice. As the sun broke over the horizon, that dark place, that suffocating room of contempt was washed, bathed in sunlight. I passed out as its scrawny fingers encircled my neck, squeezing the very life from me. <sighs> yeah, that bit, that was not nice. Oh, it was like the grudge or something. I awoke to my father offering to make me some breakfast, a wonderful sight indeed. I survived the most horrible experience of my life until then, and now. I moved the bed away from the wall, leaving behind the furniture I believed would stop that thing from taking a bed. Little did I think that it would try to take mine, and me. Weeks passed without incident, yet on one cold, frostbitten night, I awoke to the sound of the furniture where the bunk beds used to be, vibrating violently. I lay there, sure I could hear a distant wheezing coming from deep within the wall, finally fading into the distance. The following year, I was given a larger room on the other side of the house, and my parents took that room as their bedroom. They said they didn't need a large room, just one big enough for a bed and a few things. They lasted ten days. We moved on the eleventh. <sighs> okay. Okay, it needs to stop that now. That was really impressive. It, you know, it was quite short and sweet. I've only taken three parts to complete this. I think I liked what it did at the end, where yes, I was reading out the creepy bits, but those scenes in the bed were essentially the safe parts, with the dreams being the nightmares. And yet, yeah, it got a bit scary in the last nightmare bit, but I love the fact that it made your safe bed space the scary part at the end. You know, it completely threw out everything that I set up to believe myself in the game where once it was daylight, once I was in the bed, it was fine. So I really like how it turned that on his head and as you can hear, it did have an effect. And this game's definitely gonna stay with me for a while, but genuinely impressive. Like I said, I had a few qualms about the connection of the tech side of things with the gameplay. I mean, both sides were really interesting. It was really well written as well. I, I enjoyed reading it. And it definitely felt that tension. I felt it leading up to that kind of ramped up ending. And I just feel like the story could have explored some of the dreamscapes more because it was very Lovecraftian in places. And, you know, I've, I've got to give credit to the guys that did the design for that because there were some really good creepy nightmare fuel in there. You know, I'm definitely going to remember a lot of those bits that made me jump and whatnot, so I'm going to look out for more by this guy and yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed playing it and I can't wait to show you what I've got in store next, so just decide whether to put that on now. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully all three parts of it moves and I will see you in the next video. So, take care.